So here we have a simply supported beam which is being acted on by three forces acting downwards. We have a 45 kilonewton force at a distance of 0.4 meters from the left hand support. We have a 32 kilonewton force an additional 0.5 meters from the left hand support. We then have a 76.5 kilonewton force which is 0.55 meters away from the right hand support. And what we need to do is to calculate the two support reactions at A and B. The support reaction at A we're calling RA and the support reaction at B we're calling RB. Now the first thing we do when we come to solve this problem is we use the condition of static equilibrium that states that the sum of the clockwise moments equals the sum of the anti-clockwise moments. And we're going to apply that about pivot A. Once we've used that method in order to find RB, we're then going to use our second condition, which states that the sum of the forces acting downwards equals the sum of the forces acting upwards. So to begin, if we take the left hand support as our pivot, then we know that RA isn't going to cause a turning moment. We're then going to go through and we're going to evaluate the turning moments caused by each of those forces. So we have the 45 kilonewton force. And if the pivot is at the left hand side of the beam, we can see that the 45 kilonewton force is going to try to turn the beam clockwise. We then have the 32 kilonewton force, which is also trying to turn the beam clockwise, as is the 76.5 kilonewton force. In this instance, the only force that's trying to turn the beam anti-clockwise about the pivot on the left is the support reaction at B. So now we can set up our equation. The sum of the clockwise moments equals the sum of the anti-clockwise moments. We have 45 kilonewtons at a distance of 0.4 meters trying to turn the beam clockwise. So 45 times 0.4 is the value of that turning moment. We then have a 32 kilonewton force. Now the distance of the 32 kilonewton force from the pivot is going to be 0.4 meters plus 0.5 meters. You need to make sure that you always take the distance back to the pivot, not the distance to the next force. So that force there is going to be multiplied by a distance of 0.4 plus 0.5, which is 0.9. And the final force causing a clockwise turning moment is 76.5 kilonewtons at a distance of 1.55 meters. We know it's 1.55 meters because 0.4 meters plus 0.5 meters is 0.9 meters plus an additional 0.65 is 1.55 meters. That's the distance from the 76.5 kilonewton force back to the pivot. And all of that is going to be balanced by our only force causing a clockwise moment, which is RB. And that force acts at a distance of 2.1 meters from the pivot. That's the overall length of this beam. We had 1.55 meters up to the 76.5 kilonewton force, and we're adding on an additional 0.55 meters. The next step then is to simplify the left hand side of this equation. So we've got 45 times 0.4 plus 32 times 0.9 plus 76.5 times 1.55. And that gives us 165.375. So now what we're left with is a simple linear equation. And all that we need to do to each side of that equation to get RB on its own is divide each side by 2.1. And we'll be left with RB equals 165.375 divided by 2.1, which comes out to be 78.75. And we just need to take care with our units here. All of our forces acting on the beam are in kilonewtons. Therefore, the support reaction is going to be in kilonewtons. OK, now we're ready to apply our second condition, which states that the sum of the forces acting down equals the sum of the forces acting up. We've got a 45 kilonewton force acting down, plus a 32 kilonewton force, plus a 76.5 kilonewton force. And that's being balanced by RA pushing upwards, plus RB, which we know the value to be 78.75. We can simplify the left hand side. 45 plus 32 plus 76.5 is 153.5.
And in order to get RA on its own this time, all we need to do is subtract 78.75 from each side. And we'll be left with RA equals 153.5 minus 78.75, which equals 74.75. And again, take care with the units, it's kilonewtons. So we've found the support reaction at the left-hand side of the beam, RA. And we've found that using our second condition. And we've found RA to be 74.75. We've also found the support reaction at the right-hand side of our beam. And we've found that using our first condition involving the clockwise and anti-clockwise moments. And RB has come out to be 78.75 kilonewtons. So we've found the support reactions at both ends of that beam.